here in this segment, what we're looking at is the circle theorem. In order to do the circle theorem well, um, there are a few things that we have to go through as it relates to the circle itself. So as you can see on my screen here, there are various um, parts of the circle that are necessary that we have to be able to know in order to do that circle theory well. So firstly, let's just look on, on this um, circle here. Um, we ought to know what the diameter is, right? So you could say that this is the center right here. This black dot is the center right here. Um, the diameter would be a line segment, all right? A straight line segment from one point in the circumference through the center and to another point on the circumference, right? So this black circle here that you're looking at, the distance along this is the circumference. We have, we have to know that this is the circumference. I'm running my laser along. And then from one point on the circumference through the center to another point on the circumference, that's the diameter. Now, the radius is half of the diameter. So the radius would be from the center to a point on the circumference. So this is our radius. Here we have a chord. Now the diameter is actually the largest chord of any circle because it splits the circle into two equal halves. So a chord basically run from one point to another point on the circumference of the circle. So you could see how the diameter would be the largest chord that exists. Now here, as you could see, we have um, a tangent. Um, a tangent would have a point of contact to the circle, just a point of contact. That means that's where it touches the circle. Um, unlike a chord, the tangent only passes the, the circle at a point. So it touches it, or you could say it kisses the circle, right? That's what it does. It kisses the circle at a certain point. And we call that the point of tangency or the point of contact. So here it is, our tangent line. Over here, we have um, an arc, which is just a part of the circumference. So you could see the arc here. This, this red thing here is our arc. And it is just a fraction of the circumference. That's what it is. Just a fraction of the circumference. Uh, we have a sector. So a sector, as you could see, comes from the center of the circle. So it's bounded between two radii, radius, radius, and a chord. So the area between two radii and a chord is called the sector of a circle, here in green. And then this in blue is the segment, all right? Before we go though, we have, as this sector here is the minor sector, and then over here we'll have the bigger sector, which is the major sector, all of this section. So we have the minor sector like a cutter cheese, and then the other part would be the major sector. Now, in terms of segments, a segment is bounded between a chord, and here is a chord, and an arc. So this is a segment. Matter of fact, it's the minor segment, and then over this side would be the major segment. Those are just some basic ideas we need to know in order to do circle theory well. Now, let's go on to looking at just two of the rules, right? I don't mess up for this morning. All right, so here is I have a polygon, and we're going to look at rule number one. So rule number one states that the angle at the center, so the angle at the center is actually two times the angle at the circumference, providing they're standing on the same chord. All right, so let's put on the, the labeling of some angles here. All right, so we have put on that angle at, at D. All right, and then I'm going to put on this angle at A. So I'm looking at this angle at the center here. It's 132.4. And if you notice right now, this angle at D 
at the circumference is 66.2. So if you divide this by 2, definitely you'll get this. Or if you multiply this by 2, you'll get this, which means that the angle at A is 2 times the angle at D. So C, A, B is 2 times C, D, B. And if you notice, though, the angles were subtended from B and C. So basically, they are standing on the same arc right here or you could say they're standing on the same chord this imaginary line here from c to d now this theory is saying that any as long as you're standing at the same on the same chord here c to d or on the same arc if you want to look at it like this and then the angle subtends that goes to d here from b to d and as long as they are in this D is in this segment, then we are saying that it's going to be half. And even when I move it around, when I move it around, you notice that the 66.2 remains the same. I pull it come all the way here, still the same. I move it around. Even if I move it around, I'm still getting the angle to be 66.2 because it's a half of the angle at the center. Now, I could change the angle at the center. So I'm not going to let it be 132.4. I'm going to change it to something. Well, I get 120.88. So it's 120.88. And if you divide this by 2, you'll get 60.44. So even when I change the angle at the center, this angle is automatically half of it. And that is rule number one, that the angle at the center, right? Angle at the center is two times the angle form at the circumference, providing that they're standing on the same chord. All right, so let's look at this semicircle here. So this is a semicircle. So watch this. As long as I mean a semicircle, right? This angle here should be 90. And that's the point we're making. And even, so this is a semicircle. So that is why the rule says angle in a semicircle. If I have it moving around, th that it does not matter. Look at this. So as long, as long as the angle is subtended from the end point, or this is now my diameter here. So as long as they're subtended from the end point of my diameter, and then goes to the circumference, we'll get a 90 degrees. So I have 90 degrees at B, and it does not matter where I bring this, it's still gonna be 90 degrees. So we're looking at angle in a semicircle subtended from the endpoints of a diameter is always 90 degrees. So you could see for yourself, it doesn't matter how many times I move this around and stop it i'll still get my 90 degrees all right good guys so so there it is we looked at two of the theorems one um angle at the center is two times the angle at the circumference and two angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees